Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you the five reasons why do we get pain after doing a composite restoration. Composite restorations are done on a daily basis in our routine dental practice. They are almost, I would say, like a go-to material uh, whenever they, uh, whenever we have a case which requires some kind of restorative treatment. Now, uh, over a period of time, uh, many dentists have come across this uh, problem where they are facing uh, some kind of post-operative sensitivity after doing a composite restoration. This is, uh, the incidence of the same is almost, I would say, 40%. So what exactly is going wrong? Is the material at fault or whether it is a dentist at fault? So in this video, I want to share with you five basic reasons why there is pain after a composite restoration. Let's start in depth. Now the first main reason that is responsible for any kind of post-operative sensitivity after doing a composite restoration or maybe I would say pain also is contamination. Now, contamination basically can occur from saliva, it can occur from uh, the, the GCF that is coming through the gingiva or maybe it can occur from the blood also. While we are uh, excavating the caries uh, in the interproximal area near the uh, interdental papilla. Now, contamination I would say plays a very major role uh, in causing post-operative sensitivity or pain. Now, the only method to tackle this contamination factor or this uh, contamination problem is to use a rubber dam. I'll be very honest with you, in the initial years of my practice, uh, when I just started out, uh, I was not a rubber dam user. And eventually when I used to do some kind of composite restoration, not all of them used to come back with some kind of complaint, but yes, there, there, would, uh, there was a significant percentage of patients who used to come back with some kind of complaint that, uh, you know, they have uh, sensitivity to cold, sensitivity to hot or maybe they have some kind of pain while chewing etc. And uh, eventually uh, I realized that though I am isolating uh, the entire quadrant with uh, cotton rolls like there is one cotton roll in the uh, buccal vestibule, one in the lingual vestibule, one in the uh, maxillary vestibule where the parotid duct opening is but still you know uh, some kind of contamination was happening from somewhere and I was practically not aware that what, what exactly is going wrong. And eventually I realized that uh, when I am not using a rubber dam, uh, even though saliva is not contaminating, there is some kind of blood which is oozing or there is GCF that is coming out of the uh, cravicle or uh, the gingival crevice. So there is no method with which we can practically stop this GCF from coming out. So, uh, so you know, there were situations where uh, I have isolated with cotton rolls and all of a sudden I see some kind of transparent fluid that is popping out into my cavity and contaminating it. So, once, uh, once you have edged the tooth and once you have applied your adhesive and if you see some kind of contamination happening, even though it is GCF, saliva or blood, the entire restoration is going to fail. So the only way to stop this problem is to use rubber dam. Well friends, uh, rubber dam is, rubber dam always has a learning curve. You know, whenever, uh, whenever I speak to many dentists about rubber dam, they always have this, you know, uh, frustrated or, you know, uh, tensed look uh, that they give back to me. Believe me friends, I have also gone through the same scenario. Now it takes some kind of, uh, you know, effort to incorporate rubber dam into your day to day practice. Imagine, uh, let's let's take an example here. In our third year undergraduate studies, we were doing a, or we were practicing a class one cavity for almost one year. And today, how much time would you take to drill it? Maybe not even a minute. Similar is the case with a rubber dam. It takes some kind of practice and more you try to overcome your fear, more is the chance that, that, that you will master this art of isolation very soon. Those five minutes extra of placing rubber dam in the patient's mouth is going to uh, is going to be like a very huge boon that is going to benefit the patient and it is going to benefit you. 
Now, in case if you want to learn Rubberdam more in detail, we have an offline course and an online course also. Now, regarding the online course, the details of the same are there on the top end of your screen. You can definitely go ahead and uh, check out. Uh, so, this is all about contamination. The, the first and the major reason, reason why I would say there is pain after composite restoration. Now the second major reason uh, why there is post-operative pain or sensitivity after doing a composite restoration is case selection. Now we come across these cases where you know the caries is quite deep and it is almost close to the pulp. However, the pulp is not uh, uh, exposed I would say. Uh, now these kind of cases are a bit tricky that whether I should be doing a restoration or whether I should be initiating with a root canal treatment. So, uh, so the so the method that I use clinically uh, to judge whether I should be doing a restoration or whether I should be doing a root canal treatment is whether the patient has tenderness to percussion or not. Now, in case if the tenderness to percussion is positive, that means there is some kind of apical peritonditis and the bacteria have already reached the uh, the radicular pulp uh, due to which I should be initiating with the root canal treatment. However, if the patient does not have any tenderness to percussion and even if the cavity is very deep or for that matter even if the pulp opens up while excavating caries, I would still pro proceed with my vital pulp therapy and I would not initiate any kind of root canal treatment for that procedure. Now vital pulp uh, therapy again requires a stringent isolation method with rubber dam because while placing see once the pulp has been opened uh, there can be a possibility that it, it may get contaminated with salivary bacteria and eventually these bacteria may uh, grow up rapidly and they may cause some kind, some kind of post-operative pain therefore when performing vital pulp therapy it is important that i uh, gain a proper rubber dam isolation because when I uh, when I'm placing MTA over uh, the pulp, I should not have any kind of contamination from anywhere. So uh, whether there is tenderness to percussion or not is my clinical judgment or my way by which I judge whether I should be doing a composite restoration or whether I should be initiating a root canal treatment. Now the third main reason why there is uh, pain after doing composite restoration is excessive etching of dentine. Now friends, uh, we have studied the different generations of you know bonding agents and the uh, ad adhesive protocol that is the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. Today's uh, protocol is the 8th eight, generation bonds that we are using. Now the traditional 4th generation uh, adhesive system that were used, they were rely on a total edge technique. Now total edge uh, technique means that we are etching the enamel and we are etching the dentine cumulatively all together for 40 seconds. Now this 40 second etching time for dentine is uh, quite excessive I would say because dentine does not have that much inorganic content as compared to your enamel. Therefore eventually the, uh, the uh, excessive etching of dentine can cause some kind of irritation to the vital pulp. Therefore, today's concept is not of total edge technique and today we are using something which is called as a selective edge technique. So in a selective edge technique, we are placing the etchant only on enamel for 20 seconds and we, we let the enamel etch first for 20 seconds. After that, we are placing etchant on the dentine which is not etched for more than 20 seconds. So by using this modified method, we are preventing any kind of over etching of the dentine. So uh, please use this selective edge technique while doing any kind of your vital composite procedure, uh, procedures or restorations. Now uh, to overcome this uh, problem uh, in uh, the manufacturers had come out with some kind of you know uh, desensitizers which have to be used after the total edge technique. However, such kind of uh, extra inventory is definitely not needed and if you are following the concept of selective edge uh, technique, there is uh, no kind of post-operative uh, pain that would cause because of the etching of the, of the dentine. Now another product that uh, was invented to tackle this particular situation is our self-edge adhesives. Now self-edge adhesives are nothing but uh, they eliminate the etching step and uh, the etchant and the primer and the adhesive are uh, in one bottle or in a two bottle system. 
Now the only problem with self-fetch adhesives is that they do not have a strong acid as comparable to our phosphoric acid. So the so so eventually the bond strengths that we are getting after composite restoration they are far inferior as compared to your selective edge or total edge techniques. Therefore, uh, to have the best of both the worlds, use a selective edge technique. Edge the enamel for 40 seconds and edge the dentine only for 20 seconds, which would not cause any kind of post-operative sensitivity. Now, the fourth reason why there is some kind of uh, pain after doing a composite restoration is if some voids remain behind and uh, if these voids are in contact with dentine, then they may cause some, some kind of irritation or they may stimulate uh, the uh, pulp to give any uh, you know, pain response. Now let me explain you more in, in detail. Uh, so let's take an example that I am doing a case of a class 1 or maybe a class 2 composite and uh, the uh, base of the cavity is in dentine. Okay? Now due to some reason when I am uh, trying to layer a, a composite over this dentine, uh, there is some kind of air that remains behind or air get trapped and the composite uh, increment has not completely adapted to the base of the cavity. So this tiny vacuum, I would say, or air, air, it creates some kind of pressure which causes some kind of movement of the dentinal fluid uh, which eventually initiates the pain. So, uh, so you know, uh, the, so you might be wondering that I have performed the every step of composite restoration meticulously. Uh, but still the patient has a uh, post-operative pain because when the patient goes back and when he starts eating some kind of you know food or sweet or you know hot uh, uh, tea or coffee or maybe cold water there is going to be temperature variations in his oral cavity and these temperature changes are going to cause some kind of pressure in that small air void that has remained behind. Now this air void is going to act like a vacuum and it is going to cause movement of the dentine tubules. Therefore, the patient is going to perceive pain. And then eventually we are we are wondering, no, maybe the cavity was deep and uh, there would be an you know unintentional root canal treatment that would be uh, initiated for no rhyme or reason. Now, so the best way to tackle this situation is to, uh, to implement a technique which is called as an immediate dentine sealing. Now this technique of immediate dentine sealing was invented by Pascal Manier. Now in his classic article what he has mentioned that uh, you need to apply your adhesive precisely or meticulously with a periodontal probe only on the dentine and not on the enamel because we don't want any excessive thickness of bonding layer uh, that, that remains on the enamel because bonding to enamel is the best thing that one can have in uh, in restorative dentistry. So precisely in his classic article what he is mentioning that uh, we need to apply uh, your adhesive uh, to, uh, to the edge dentine. So by this what is happening is that uh, the entire dentine tubules are practically sealed completely and even if my composite increment does not add up, the dentine tubules are already sealed. So there is not going to be any uh, de, uh, any fluid movement inside the dentine tubules and eventually the patient is not going to perceive any kind of post-operative pain. Now in his classic article of Pascal Manier, uh, he has recommended to use uh, Kerr Optibond FN. However, in India, Kerr is not available. Okay, Optibond FN. FN is not available. So uh, in uh, the, the subsequent article uh, what Pascal Manny had uh, published, uh, he mentions that if you don't have Kerr Optibond FL, what we can use is after your adhesive, whatever adhesive is available in, in India, uh, the, the universal adhesives that you, you are using, after you have coated a layer of these adhesives, we need to apply a drop of I would say a thin layer of flowable composite over it, over it to reinforce that bonding agent or that adhesive. So this is a, I would say like a dual protection which will not cause any kind of fluid movement inside dental tubules. Eventually the patient is not going to perceive any pain. Now the fifth and the last reason why do we get pain after a composite restoration 
is uh, not removing the oxygen inhibition there. Now, I would say that this is not a direct reason as to the patient can perceive pain, but yes, there, uh, there is definitely some relation if the oxygen inhibition layer is not removed after doing a composite restoration. Now, this oxygen inhibition layer is uh, nothing but uh, the topmost layer of, uh, of uh, the composite that we have layered in the cavity is in contact with the air and eventually the, it, uh, it leads to uncured monomer that stays behind. Now, if this uncured monomer, if it is not removed, uh, then there is a possibility that uh, it might lead to micro leakage and eventually micro, uh, uh, the patient over a period of time, maybe after six months, one year, the patient may complain of some kind of post-operative pain. Now, how to tackle this oxygen inhibition layer? Uh, there is already a video on the same, the link of which is uh, there at the top end of your screen. You can go ahead and see more in detail about the oxygen inhibition layer. So friends, these were uh, the five main reasons what I would say uh, that there may be some kind of pain after doing a composite restoration. Now, if these five reasons are not tackled properly, uh, there is a possibility that you may end up doing an uh, unindicated root canal for a, uh, of a tooth which can easily be corrected by, by doing the proper protocol of a composite restoration. So just follow these protocols meticulously and I'm sure that none of your patients are going to complain any kind of post-operative pain. Thank you friends and see you in the next video.